Okay, hello everybody. This is Nate from uh, Cord Cutters, and today we are going to be chatting with Richard from Antennas Direct. Let me pop him in. Oh, that's not him. Well, there he is. Hey, Richard, <laughs> how you doing? Hi, Cord Cutters. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I want to give a little bit of background about who you are, and um, at some point I'm planning on letting everyone ask questions in the chat. Uh, but for now, we'll just sort of chat. We'll just talk amongst ourselves and let let them do some listening. How about? Um, so, Richard, I guess let's let's start with Antennas Direct. Sort of, what what, what is the company, and and can you tell me a bit about how you guys got started? Sure, sure. So, Antennas Direct is uh, as as it as the name implies, we are uh, we manufacture antennas specifically tuned to the frequencies um, that digital broadcasters are on. And uh, I started it actually out of my garage in 2003. Um, and it was actually really for hobbyists. Um, most of the people who were interested in high definition at the time uh, were home theater enthusiasts. And re remember in 2003, this predates Blu-ray by a few years. Um, and there's, you know, there's a community of you know, lunatics uh, that have $50,000 home theaters um, but no content. Right. And so, it, it, you know, that early in the early 2000s, the only thing that was being broadcast were like these video loops of bees pollinating flowers and things. And and uh, maybe these loops of people skiing down a hill or something. But uh, but but uh, hobbyists were starving for content. And the problem was the antennas that were sold on the shelves at the big box stores actually were essentially unchanged since, you know, the 1950s. And, uh, you know, I challenge anyone, anyone to find a consumer electronics device that has really been untouched for, you know, 70 years. So what, what I did is actually um, develop some antennas that were more focused on the frequencies on which digital broadcasters were on. And then our, our standard of broadcasting is a little more persnickety uh, than analog. It, it's a more, more sensitive to interference. So... Yeah. We had to design something with maybe a little narrow beam width with some null spots some rejection off the rear lobes. But long story short, we had a better mousetrap. And I really only thought it would be, you know, a, a side business, something to support my home theater hobby. And I thought maybe I'd sell 20 or 30 antennas a month. Uh, first, I was giving them away, and then I was charging just the cost of materials. Um, and then I put up a website called Antennas Direct, um, never thinking these would ever be sold in retail stores. Right. Uh, hence the name direct. And, <laughs> and uh, it just blew up. It, and, and I'd like to think it was my marketing genius, but um, it turns out I wasn't the only one that was struggling with finding an antenna that would actually be reliable. And so um, we, I, I, you know, I built up a batch of 50 antennas and, and then sell out, you know, with literally within 48 hours. And uh, it just kept growing and growing. And for the first few years, we were doubling about every six months in volume. And, um, and, to, and to shorten the story, um, now in uh, 2018, we're in 9,000 stores. So we're chain wide at Best Buy and Fry's Electronics and Walmart and sometimes Costco and another, oh, Lowe's bad. Hardware and a few others. Um, and so now we're, you know, we're, we're very widely distributed and we've sort of crossed over from the lunatic fringe where the fanatical home theater enthusiasts and we're not <laughs> selling to uh, relatively normal people. Yeah, <laughs> I guess lunatic fringe. That is a pretty good description. I, I I was definitely part of that group. The like in the two thousand eight two thousand nine uh, area. I would I, I actually started writing blog posts. No, that was two thousand ten. Blog posts about these guys who would build you know a literal bat cave um, with their own cinema projector and and every one of them. It was at the time. I, st I think this was still before Blu-ray or Blu-ray and, 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 and uh, HD DVD were just sort of barely on the cusp of getting started. Um, the, every one of them had this amazing projector and all of their content was DVDs usually, unless yeah. unless they're recording you a, TV. You got a $70,000 projector and you're showing, you know, four ADI, you know, DVDs on it, you know, and there's there's no way to realize this investment. And wait, I can spend 50 bucks on an antenna <laughs> yeah. and get actual HD on my projector. People, it was a rounding error for a lot of these, you know, home theater, um, you know, enthusiasts. 
Yeah, then that's actually, so I guess let's cut straight to it. One of the, one of the things that made me think it would be a fun thing to chat with you about this is, is an article that came out uh, in August um, on the Wall Street Journal um, that was... Uh, the, the, you were you were you were uh, you were quoted in, but the the article was essentially millennials don't actually know that free TV exists. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is surprising to a lot of people. Obviously, you and I and our peers, of course, know about this. Um, but um, uh, our studies show about seventy percent of the population doesn't know you can get digital television for free over the air, and that's been our biggest challenge since we've been in business. Is you know, some people think it's a scam or some people actually believe that digital broadcasting actually stopped in 2009 when they did a digital transition. Yeah. They think that means you had to go to Netflix or something like that. Um, so there's a there's a people are under the illusion or the, 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 the misinformation that we don't even have broadcasting. And I'm, you know, I'm in a you know, middle market town. I'm in St. Louis. I can get about 55 channels. Um, in Wichita, I was there a couple of years ago as, as a guest of a station. I did a channel scan. I got 45 channels. Hmm. I would think there's more than that. In LA, there's over 100 channels. And this is like the best kept secret, you know, out there um, that you can get, you know, 50 to 100 channels from no monthly charge. And a lot of these channels are in high definition at a picture quality that's better than that of satellite or cable. Yeah. Um, and they again, people are like, well, what's the catch? Is this legal or is this a hack? You know? <laughs> yeah. And it is. I, so uh, f from our perspective, it, the, it, it is an awkward, weird sort of hack in a manner of speaking. A, a lot of the people that come in on, on Cody's side. So that's sort of my perspective, all this. Um, th they come in with this sort of idea that the way you get content has to somehow be from a computer, whether it's a big desktop computer or maybe your 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 tablet or something like that. But the idea of getting content literally on your TV or even recorded from something that doesn't pass through a cord into your router is just like this crazy concept to them. Um, <laughs> and I don't... It's such a hard conversation to have so many times because... Because th then you have to go through like this process of explaining, <sighs> yes, so one way, <laughs> so, so, so I guess to back up, a lot of times we'll release videos in cord cutters where, you know, we'll have a really big library of content um, and the people will be like, oh, look at you evil pirates. But if you actually look at the library of content, every single one of those things can very easily be legally recorded um, off of an over the air TV antenna. Uh, yeah, for the most and, part. and the and the broadcasters themselves are investing billions of dollars in the, into their digital transmission infrastructures and in the content, you know. And it's 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 funny that they very rarely even mention this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, collectively the broadcasters have spent about twelve billion dollars on building out their digital infrastructure, and now they're doing all these you know multicasts, these dot twos and dot threes, and and, uh, you know, they're filling it with all kinds of really interesting content. And again, of course, it's free. Um, a lot of it's been remastered. You can get Hogan's Heroes in high definition. It blows people's minds. <laughs> and, and again, you don't have to go through your writer like your And it does blow people's minds that uh, you can you can go you can bypass the, your 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 Wi-Fi infrastructure and, and just, get, you know, catch it off an antenna. Yeah. And that's uh so it's going to start sounding like we're both talking to the talking to the choir because we're both yeah. pretty sold on this, which is frustrating. We need somebody who doesn't get it to, to be like, but I don't get it. Um, but whatever. Well, I, I'm just going to keep chatting it up anyway, because it's so annoying to me to deal with people who don't get it. Um, so uh, so I'm going to do so. OK, so before we got started, I, 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 I asked you kind of like what websites or what applications are worth sort of looking into to get, you know, this whole thing started uh, in terms of antennas. Um, and you suggested I look into Antenna Point, uh, which is an app. Um, but you can also go onto the website and sort of plug in your zip code. So I'll plug mine in. Oh, not that's not it. Um and it gives you sort of an idea of where all the local, really local content is, I guess. 
Um, yeah, I think the default search is like 60 miles or something like that. Yeah, I'm trying to call it up on my phone. It's it's actually linked to your um, um, your compass. And um, the whole idea is, is, you know, we've got this thing here. And I'm holding it up. I don't know if it can view, but you can turn it and you can you actually use your phone to help you aim your antenna. Oh, so all and the it, little black hash. Oh, here, I'm going to switch over the camera so people can see better. Yeah. All the little black hash marks um, are the antennas, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're transmitting towers in your town. And yeah. you can see how far you are through these concentric circles, how far you are relative to transmitting towers in your area. So you can see I'm, you know, I'm relatively close to the transmitting towers in St. Louis. I'm within you know, about nine to nine to 12 miles of my transmitters. Um, so it gives you an idea. One is how strong of an antenna would you need? You know, let's say you're within 20 miles, you could probably get away with an indoor antenna, but let's say you're 50 miles away, you know, then we're gonna try to encourage you to go with an outdoor antenna. So simple stuff like that. And then the best antennas are actually the ones with some directionality because they're better at rejecting interference. Yeah. Um, so we like, you know, rifles sometimes for long distance reception rather than a shotgun. Right. And it, and it, and it give you give you a sense. And obviously the average, you know, uh, person doesn't know where the transmitting towers are. They're generally not where the studios are. It's generally another location. And I, you know, I wouldn't expect people to know where that is anyway. So it's, I, I would agree with you in most places where I live. The land is so literally so flat that you can see those towers from like <laughs> really far away. I, I, I know like there are three of them just just uh, which direction is that east of me? Um, and then so I, in my situation, I, I'm in a house that's real old, like really old. Um, and for whatever reason, it makes it very difficult to pick up one of the channels it's pbs i don't i don't know what the real channel name is it's 8.1 here i guess um so yeah and older homes are a lot more difficult yeah uh because you guys have plaster walls and, and brick walls you know it's those cheap subdivision homes they're built out of paper those things work really easy with an indoor <laughs> antenna yeah <laughs> oh man the, the 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 rare situation where it's awesome to have terrible sighting yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's for, for me, it's it's um, it was a little bit of a kind of a hassle to start out with because, oh, it wasn't. No, I was I'm wrong. Uh, KPTS wasn't the problem. The problem was whatever CBS is. Um, it's channel 12, but whatever that is in terms of numbers. Um, and, and it was a real problem because I'm a I'm sort of addicted to to uh, Stephen Colbert. Um, ever since, uh, for reasons, um, and <laughs> and uh, it was it was very difficult for quite a long time to kind of get him tuned in. So like the only way for me to watch was was in the little clips that they would put online on YouTube, um, and then I kind of you know I got my ridiculous huge antenna here and I got it all situated the right way, um, and that did it. Now now CBS is absolutely no problem for me. And all the rest was always fine. Like I said, yeah. it's like three miles away. So you away. put it outside. That was that solved your problem. Yeah, put it just put it outside. Yeah. I haven't done that yet, but I probably should, shouldn't I? Yeah, old homes are, are you know, they're built well. They're built like <laughs> like vaults. So uh, the new you know most of the signals are on UHF, and UHF signals are line of sight. Um, they don't penetrate brick very well. They don't penetrate metal of you know lath. Um, they, they do okay with windows. So if you get your antenna in a window, that's probably okay. Yeah. Um, and that's what I, that's what I did. Yeah. It's like, and in Kansas, you don't have to fight mountains. No. So that makes yeah. it a lot easier. Yep. Yeah. My, it was, when I was little, uh, we visited my aunt who lives in upstate New York. Um, and the, everyone had cable and I didn't get it at the time because in my world, there's no point. There was no point in having cable. All the best cartoons were on the regular channels. Um, I didn't get Fraggle Rock. That was like the one thing I was sad about in life. Um, and, and it turned out if you used an antenna where she lived in like the middle of this valley where there's nothing, um, it was, I, I don't remember how many channels she actually got, but it was not many. 
But I, I, I think it's the rare situation where if you live sort of off by yourself outside of a town in the middle of some mountains, maybe maybe it doesn't work quite as well. Yeah, we don't. Again, the signals don't do well with uh, mountains. Uh, we've had a lot of issues. Denver's a good example of a problem um, city where people, you know, can have struggles depending on what side of the town they live on. And we've got to persuade people they're going to have to go outside and maybe put up a, you know, 10 or 15 foot mast and, you know, get some edge diffraction or something. But yeah, outdoor antennas have a much higher batting average, especially if there's terrain involved. Yeah. Um, and in fact, that's actually one of our comments l literally just said, He's got, uh, he's got his antenna on a hundred wait on a chimney pole that gets a hundred and fifty mile radius. So oh, yeah. Wow! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> so we put maximum claim we put on our marketing materials is seventy miles. Now we have some customers that have ham radio towers and they'll buy multiple antennas and stack them. Yeah. And they can get a hundred and fifty or two hundred miles plus range. Um, sometimes even more than that, but. Most of uh, most people aren't that, quite that that motivated. <laughs> so yeah, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It would be pretty cool. That would I, I I certainly don't get anything like that. But if I if I put up enough, I might be able to get like Dodge City and things like way out there from where I am. That would be pretty yeah, cool. The cur curve of the Earth normally limits. Uh, I use the example of a Kansas prairie. Yeah, you have a two story house on a Kansas prairie. You shouldn't expect it much more than 70 or 75 miles um, unless you're willing to go something exotic like a ham radio tower or something to put the, the antennas on. Yeah. Um, you know, but, you know, if you live in high, you know, on high ground, like like the like the, the person you chatted. Uh, yeah. I mean, 150 miles is certainly achievable. Yeah. Uh, not. Yeah. Mostly not necessary for most people, I'm guessing, though. No. Yeah. But there's hobbyists out there. God love them because they buy antennas four at a time. Yeah. So, you know, they have competitions who can see who get the longest reception. Yeah. And I, I'd love to encourage that behavior if we can. <laughs> yeah, it helps the bottom line just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. All these people <laughs> buying one, one antenna at a time. It's just, we need to get them buying them by the, by the, by the uh, master carton. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, I, I've, so I, I, living in Wichita, the only way for me to get, uh, to to get uh, the Ro Kansas City Royals Royals fan, I, I'm I'm assuming you're on the other side on that one. Yeah, yeah, Cardinals. Yeah, <laughs> but the only way for me to get it is with cable. I, I've always kind of wondered if I just had a big enough antenna if I could get some sort of stream out of Kansas City. But no. How many air um, miles would you think you're from Kansas City? Uh, I think a lot. I I think it's like 200 or something. Way way too yeah. much. Yeah, that's some serious DXing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The tower is certainly going to cost a lot more than the antenna would. Yeah. Yeah. At, at that point, I mean, in, in this world, you can always, and it is, there are things that even an antenna can't get. Like, I mean, I mean, HBO is a is basically the only example I care about, um, but Major League Baseball is the other one. Um, and in those situations, it's pretty easy to just sign up for those two things and then handle pretty much everything else with the antenna. Um, which brings up, I, I guess, the, the next point on the list, which is what to do when you get all, all of these transmissions. Um, what a lot of Kodi users do, um, and, and I think not everybody watching this is Kodi users, so, so bear with me for a second. Um, but what a lot of Kodi users do is they have like a DVR setup, but it always kind of sucks because you have to pay somebody. Um, you have to pay. There's a if you do it yourself using HD Home Run, which is our most go-to application, um, you have to pay twenty dollars a year to somebody, and you have to be really good at playing with XML files, which is not. I mean, that's a bad sign that you have to even say the word XML to get started. Um, you can also do things like, like, like rent from, uh, or not rent, but pay a subscription fee to other companies out there. Um, but what, so what, what, what are your guys, do you have, what, what kind of solutions do you guys have for this? So we have an over the air DVR. It's a, it's called Clearstream TV. And what it does is it, it actually has a tuner an ATSC tuner built into it. It has, um, um, onboard memory. And then it has a transcoder uh, so that it can take the over-the-air signals uh, and tune them and then 
transcode them and distribute them out over your Wi-Fi system to your tablets, your phones, your Roku's, whatever TiVo's, what, you know, whatever device you might have. And it has, um, it has the ability to pause and rewind and record shows. Now, it is not as sophisticated as a TiVo, yeah. but there is no subscription fee. It's free to use. And the broadcasters, the over-the-air broadcasters, generally send out around seven to 10 days of program guide data. Now, it, and now it's variable. I got to be honest with you. It's not going to be probably as detailed as the stuff you pay for from TiVo. So some depends on, you know, how, how motivated the interns are at that station. Right. They might write a you know, lovely description of the show or the movie, or it might just say movie. <laughs> so, they're, they're, it, it, so there's variability, but it, there's generally a fairly robust program guide that you get. And it actually is all, a layer of the digital television signal. Yeah. So there's, there, it's, 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 it's metadata that comes with the, the broadcast. And so we kind of, we pull that in and we can give you that, that program guide data, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, we can give you that. And then you can record shows and pause and rewind TV um, with that. So it's, it's, it's a way to do it. And it, again, it's not meant for people that are hardcore, um, maybe Cody users or people who know, even know what an XML is. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but now HD Home Run, they, I believe, subscribe. Um, there's, I think, a couple options with those guys where you can get a free version. And then if you want to pay the big five bucks or 10 bucks a month, they will pull in guide data from Tribune Media Services or somebody who actually curates that data and has someone fill all that out. So, you yeah. know, it depends on how, how important that is to you. Do you know, I actually, I don't remember how long, this was quite a while ago. At, at some point in my life, um, a few years ago, I was talk. I actually talked to some guys who it's very possible that you connected me to them at this point. I, I don't remember, but I talked to some guys at uh, one of the one of the digital TV uh, broadcasters uh, out there in the world um, about guide data because um, I was curious about it. I wanted to know more about like where theirs came from and how exactly it's set up inside the ATSC stream. And one one of the really interesting things I got from that conversation was that most most broadcasters get their guide data from the same services as everybody else. Like like it's not it's like it's not like CBS sends it directly to them. What happens is CBS gives it to Tribune or somebody like that, and then the broadcasters get it from Tribune and just post it all up. And yeah, I, I think so, because I've noticed some of some similarity between the free, we call the PSIP data screen that comes over, and then stuff that TiVo is sort of the gold standard, you know, the, the, the TiVo guide data. Yeah. So, that, you know, the stuff that's coming from the network certainly is going to probably be more um, uh, flushed out than maybe the local content. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting how all of that, how, all of that stuff plays out. Um, which I guess, uh, we're, we're now at about the half hour mark. So I want to switch over to this cause I really only planning on doing maybe 45 minutes. I don't want to keep you too long. And also we've got a thunderstorm coming. So at any point I could crash out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, old house. Um, but I want to, I want to talk about the future because, because I think that's easily some of the most interesting stuff. And, and you, you were kind of bringing it up earlier, but sort of. Do you, do you do you have kind of a good idea of where we're going? Like I, I know ATSC two and three are things people talk about, but what do those mean, and are they ever going to be adopted? Well, it's, I'm glad you asked that because I just we are actually voting members on the ATSC. Um, we just got our we had our spring meeting last week, um, and it's pretty exciting. And I'm I am going to be a big booster promoter of ATSC three O. It is really it's going to be a game changer. Um, it is IP based, um, and in exchange for you sharing some of your information, this is where lately people are getting a little nervous, but if you share a little bit of information, they're going to really be able to narrow cast to you. Hmm. So, you know, you're going to see ads that are more targeted to your interests. Um, you know, I'm going to see ones that are targeted to mine. Um, you're going to have, uh, it's more spectral efficient. It uses a more efficient codec. So you can, you can put a lot more programming. You're, it'll support 4K, 
Uh, it's going to support uh, eight channel surround sound. Cool. Um, it will support much more additional multicasting. And then the neat thing is, you know how a lot of folks uh, have a, maybe a tablet or laptop and uh, while they're watching TV, and they're Googling stuff while they're, you know, their second screen. Yeah. Well, they're, they're going to have interactive content. So you're watching a show or a movie. You can get the biography of that actress. You can get a uh, plot synopsis, whatever, much more data um, than you could. And you can order stuff. You see a, you know, a chair or something in the background, you could order that. Huh. So it's going to be a much more robust. Also, the, 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 the structure, the fundamental structure of ATSC 3.0 is going to be more interference resistant. So the, the standard we have now, you have to have a fairly high gain antenna with a good rejection of, 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 of signals that are, you know, in unintentional radiation, as we like to say. Right. You know, non-desirable signals or it'll, it'll pixelate. ATS 3.0 is, is going to be really robust um, it, in, in, with, with interference. It's not going to be as susceptible. And unlike our current standard, it can be used in a, in a moving vehicle. So you can watch, you know, your kids can watch cartoons in the car. Um, you can watch it on a phone or a tablet while you're moving around, which you really can't do. Even our antennas today, if they're on a tall pole and the wind is moving them around, the picture will break up because yeah. we have to be fixed. Um, and it's going to be really exciting, especially also the early warning thing. So um, the weatherman in Wichita is going to have the ability to wake up your television. There's a tornado coming and they plot the path. They can wake up every television in the path of the tornado. Oh, wow. And say, wake up, <laughs> get out of bed, go to the shelters. Obviously, you can't do that with with ATSC 1.0. Um, you know, <laughs> we've got you know we've got high definition and we've got some multicast, but this is going to be really exciting. And you know, and, and they actually it's almost like the internet. They haven't even wrapped their minds around all the business you know cases there is. I mean, a lot of it is centered around um, narrow casting. So maybe you're going to watch uh, high school football games, but just in your neighborhood. And maybe the neighborhood, you know, 10 miles away is going to watch the other school district play. So they oh. can do some really exciting things with that. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't really conceive of that, of that. Cause my, my head's so fixed on dumb TV right now. And I'm excited about the air, you know, even for advertising, you know, I've got a friend who owns a cupcake shop down the street. She can't afford a, you know, put on television commercials. But if but but if she could just broadcast to the five blocks around her cupcake shop, you know, it would lower the cost for her and it would be more relevant to the viewers. Huh. So, I mean, it's a you know, it's going to be a big game changer on the advertising side, on the viewer side. I mean, obviously, 4K is going to be really exciting. Um, you're going to fit a lot more data down the pipe. So um, the, back to the, the advertising thing, that's sort of interesting. Is that is that the kind of thing where you wouldn't even necessarily need to give up your your information because well they got they got two different if, if it's uh, right there models. There's obviously geo targeting is easy. They don't have to ask too many questions for that. Yeah, but they're going to have some kind of promos and coupons and giveaways, you know, and you'll you'll sign up with your Facebook account or something. Mm -hmm. So then they go, oh, you're a male. Oh, your age is you know. You know, 25 to 49. Okay, they'll get some data. You know, they'll bribe you. <laughs> I know of a good way. Induce you might be a more polite way of sharing a little bit of demographic data, and then maybe you know your wife doesn't see truck ads, but maybe you see the truck ads. Yeah. You know, it's going to be more just like Google does now. I mean, when you see yeah. ads and those cookies, it follows you around and usually serves you ads that are somewhat in your field of interest. Right. And, or Netflix so, does the same thing. I, I, I'm kind of uh, uh, Netflix seems like the best example, maybe to some extent, even though they don't serve ads, but they do that same thing where they kind of follow you around and then they they exactly they, they, exactly. they say yeah. what you want to see. And, and they're usually often pretty right. And they're going to do custom programming to people of your demographic and shared interests. I was talking yes last week of the head of PBS. And one of the things they're going to use it for is let's say you're a supporter of your local PBS station. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're never going to see a pledge drive. But if but if you're like me and you don't support the PBS PBS station, well, I'm going to have to suffer through those pledge drives. Oh wow! So it'll it'll target <laughs> me differently than it will you. And then 
the holy grail is not everything they're going to be able to send, send is going to be television. Um, they're, they're talking about data casting in a big way. So this may be the last mile. And the neat thing about ATSC3 is it doesn't necessarily have to come from one stick. Uh, it supports something called a single frequency network. Think of it as cellular television broadcasting. And you could have 20 towers in Wichita, all broadcasting on the same channel and not interfering with one another. So not only could they send customized weather and sports and news into those 20 neighborhoods, but you could have a backhaul to the station and they could serve you pay-per-view movies. Hmm. Or they could have freemium content where, you know, maybe there is a, um, a race on, but if you want to get it, you know, different angles and, and uh, commercial free, maybe there's a, you know, maybe it's 99 cents. Huh. So there's a, there's, they're talking about freemium models and then they're talking about point to po almost, you know, uh, point uh, to point where it's going to be over the year Netflix, sort of like the last mile. And there's really no limit to these single frequency networks right now. They're broadcasting in Dallas and in Washington and, and Baltimore on these single frequency networks. And they're on the exact same channel. There's a channel 43 in DC and one in Baltimore and they're completely overlapping and there's no interference. And that's, was unthinkable a couple of years ago. Yeah. So it's, it's, I'm really excited about it. And you, you're going to have, you're going to be able to get it again with a, with a flipping antenna. So it's not going to be a huge investment. You're not going to have to be a rocket scientist. If you want to get, you know, more, more of the targeted stuff, you're going to have to share some information, obviously, but I'm sure there'll, there'll be some inducements to make it worth your while to, to give up some demographic data. Out of curiosity, you, you mentioned the last mile. Is there, is there any chance of that? Have there, has there ever been any discussion of like actually serving the internet itself over TV airwaves like that? Well, it is. And uh, actually Dish Network just bought some spectrum um, right above channel 50. And they're going to be doing some last mile stuff right now in Dallas hmm. um, using the Dish bot. They have this subsidiary that owns spectrum um, and they're going to be testing serving movies over the air. And so, you know, some things lend themselves to, to, you know, point to multi-point, others that can be point to point. And so, you know, it's very expensive to run a fiber line into everyone's house. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. especially in an area like yours where, you know, the population is rather low density, you know, it's not very cost effective, but with a, you know, with a, with a broadcasting uh, infrastructure, you could serve rural neighborhoods or semi-rural neighborhoods with high speed uh, internet or, Maybe, you know, I don't think they've wrapped their minds around everything. It could be just limited to video. And then you offload some of that bandwidth off of your, your, your landline. Huh. So uh, it's, it's, it reminds me of the mid nineties when the internet came out, you know, people are trying to figure out what to do with all this, this ability. And they hadn't quite, it took them a few years to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but the good news to the consumer is it's really not, it's not going to require uh, that much of an investment, you're going to have to have an antenna on the broadcaster. The good news is it's not that big of an upgrade for them. They're talking 400 to $600,000 per station, which, you know, it sounds a lot like a lot of money to you and me, but to a TV station, that's a, like a news van. It's not a big deal. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and it's a 10th of what they spent for, to go to ATSC one out. Um, and so it's, and I'm excited actually just about the multicasting too. Um, so there's going to be interactive parts of it where you can request things. You can buy things that you see online. There'll be online, there'll be, uh, I mean, uh, coupons that'll be broadcast. You'll be able to redeem and have things, you know, sent to your house. You see a Pizza Hut commercial, <laughs> you'll be able to use your remote to order things. So it will be bi-directional in that regards. But I'm excited about multicasting because, you know, in, in a city like, like ours, we could be seeing 100, 150, 200 channels, you know, in aggregate. Yeah. And that's going to be really the new basic cable. Yeah. That's, it reminds me of well, br bringing back, back the, the idea of the nineties when we were all like, how, how can we use all of this stuff? I, I'm reminded of a like, commercial that came out, I think late nineties, early two thousands. It was maybe a Dell commercial or something, but in the commercial, it shows a woman in the middle of a football field, opening her laptop up and using it. And everyone at the time was like, that's him possible there's no way a wi-fi network could make it that far um and we just barely discovered wi-fi in the first place 
Uh, and, you know, cellular phones were not digital in any way, so that was not something that was going to happen. Um, so so it's, it's, fun, it's fun to think that we might, you know, if and when this kind of starts happening, we might be on another Wild West where, where all the stuff that we think isn't really possible anymore might suddenly become possible again. Oh, yeah. And, and also, um, you know, it, it supports encryption. So you could have free to air, you could have HBO over the air, you know, without having to call an installer or anything. You could a la carte channels. Um, it is, you know, it is a lot of people think it's radical, but you know, in the, in the last couple of years, people didn't think you could broadcast on two channels at the same time hmm. and overlap. And that was considered heresy. Yeah. So I'm, re I'm really excited. The thing that, that concerns me is about 3.0, it is not a federal mandate. It is entirely voluntary, the TV stations. Right. So there, unlike 1.0, there, there won't be a hard cutoff where we all, you know, big bang, flip the switch off of 1.0 and on to, there'll be about a, at least a five-year transition. More like, I'm thinking it'll be closer to 10 years where they'll be simulcasting uh, on both, on both uh, formats. Do you have any kind of idea, like when, when, it'll, when, when the start of this process will, will begin? Yes, in about two years. They're already broadcasting in several cities now. Um, every station of Phoenix uh, this summer will be broadcasting a 3.0 signal. Um, Dallas is broadcasting in Washington, Raleigh, and Baltimore. Each has one channel. Um, the problem is there are no receivers. Yeah. So the only people who are watching this are the station engineers. <laughs> I don't think we can even go online right now unless you go to Korea or something and get a, a 3.0 receiver. Yeah. So so the engineers are driving around watching TV and checking the signal. But it's not, um, L, I, I met with someone from LG last week, and they're producing the receivers in, China, in uh, uh, sorry, South Korea. Um, and those are available now. Um, but they're probably not going to be on sale at least till this fall. Um, and they'll be showing at CES. Um, in January, they'll be showing uh, consumer available receivers and oh. they'll be set top boxes and they'll be at least LG will have them with the with the tuners built in. Wow. Well, cool. Yeah, I'm excited because as it's going to sell antennas. <laughs> now, the cool problem for you with, as well. <laughs> the problem with 3.0 is you don't necessarily need a good antenna. You yeah. could probably hang a coat hanger off your TV and get it. So then I'm wondering, well, I still am being business. Do you need to spend ninety nine dollars for an antenna? The coat hanger is going to work because it'll be that robust of a signal. So we're going to have to step up our marketing game or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, but more of the more of the tiny little ones you have. Yeah. Yeah. What um, I, I guess speaking of that, w w one of the things you mentioned, it, it will be available mobily um, and yeah. and that would be really cool. The only problem I've run into is that, in theory, FM radio, HD FM radio is the same way, where everyone could theoretically get it on their phones literally right now, but it's so hard to find a phone that supports that. Like, I know Samsung, usually their their top-end devices do, but iPhones never do. Do you have any, any guess as to what, like, what kind of support mobile devices will have for this kind of thing? Well, initially, it's going to be a dongle. Yeah. So there's already people showing prototype dongles at the shows. You're going to be able to plug into your lightning jack or your micro USB, and it'll you know stick to the back of your phone or your tablet. Um, you know, I don't know. Obviously, Apple's got a walled garden. I don't know how excited they're going to be about building in tuners and antennas. Yeah. Um, now, the Android-based guys, I think, especially LG and the, and the Koreans, since it's, it is the standard now in South Korea, um, anything coming out of there, I think, is going to be more willing to support it um but it's going to certainly save you a hell of a lot of data you're getting this stuff streaming off the air then 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 watch you know getting it off your uh 3g or lte yeah so that's a big thing that's going to relieve you of your of your data uh, burden that's actually i mean in the world of of all internet delivery um Anytime you can find a new competitor that's going to compete with the other two guys in the room, it's a it's a it's a great thing. Yeah, yeah, and well, I'm excited as the last mile. You know, option is that you know might provide some some competition to the cable guy, the phone company. You'd have a third option potentially. 
Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they tried this thing with mobile DTV. It was a different format and it just fell flat. Yeah. And so this, this will be one standard that's going to work in your house and on your phone without any changes in, in format. It'll be one single uh, broadcast standard. Well, cool. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. Well, we're getting pretty close to uh, wrap up time. We're almost at 45 minutes. Um, uh, if anyone has any questions uh, in chat, feel free to ask them now. We'll get about a 30 second delay. Um, so far, all I'm getting are a lot of people saying how much they love having various old school boxes. One I don't recognize at all. Have you ever heard of a ViewStat box? Do you know what that is? ViewStat? Yeah. No, I'm not familiar with, with that. Yeah, I don't know it either. Is that a, a set-top box? You got me. Um, what, what is this guy's name? Matthew, you'll have to explain to us what a view stat box is. We are, we are at a loss, my friend. Um, uh, yeah. And any other questions, uh, feel free to, feel free to chime in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not getting any, any additional questions, but, um, I don't know. Uh, this has been, this has been pretty fun. We might have to do this again sometime. Um, and if people do pop in some questions, maybe we'll, we'll, uh, We'll answer them next time around. Well, I'll tell you, I have an ATSC. I'm going to send away um, to Korea for an, uh, an LG TV, actually, because I want to start um, playing around with some of these transmissions. Yeah. And we're going to see how badly degraded, you know, we can have an antenna and still get reliable reception. Oh, uh, so would you just go to like, where, where did you say, Dallas or somewhere like that and just yeah, drive away Dallas slowly? Yeah, and Phoenix and maybe DC. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to mail order a korean you know domestic market lg tv and um hopefully something portable <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just try hanging you know our antennas and then maybe just hanging off tinfoil and seeing how it works with uh you know it's 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 going to be very robust i believe and the fact that you can aim an antenna you know off access or whatever and it still receive it you know we get a lot of phone calls two to three hundred phone calls a day and most of it is you know, I'm not getting any signal because, you know, I, they don't realize that they're, that it's aimed the wrong direction. Hmm. Yeah. You know, or they haven't, you know, remembered to for, scamper channels. It's usually not the antenna, but it's still beyond um, the comprehension of, an, of a lot of average customers that there's going to be some research still involved to know where the transmitting towers are. And with 3.0, I think it's going to be much more forgiving of mistakes than our current standard. And our current standard, I'm not, I don't want to trash it, but we've focused on uh, high definition over everything else. And we picked that high fidelity over reliability. Yeah. And that's great if you're a video file like I am, but if you're, you know, just Joe non, non, non techy, you know, it's, it's, it, it's can be frustrating. So, yep. But that was, I mean, that that was that was how it was back then. That I mean, that that standard was was put together in like '97 or something like that, right? Oh yeah, they they now. started the consortium in '92, and yeah, they were broadcasting in Raleigh, North Carolina, I think, in '97. Yeah. So, and you had to have a freaking hell of a antenna, you know, to get re reception. It was very non forgiving. Yeah. <laughs> the standard of any kind of in, you know fluorescent lights or car ignition or anything would, would have it pixelate <laughs> fluorescent yeah, lights that's awesome <laughs> yeah and think, and think about that i mean we didn't have fluorescent lights in the homes but did we 10 years ago you know do we have all the charging devices we have today 10 years ago all those things radiate rf signals yeah and it plays havoc with reception yeah that's actually uh there was there was a um i i had an led light at one point that I, it's somehow, and I have no idea how, but it seems to, it, it seems like it, it, it sent out just the perfect, um, IR signal or something to my TV. Um, and, and it would make it so that as long as it was on the, t it didn't do anything to the TV, but the remote control stopped working entirely while this led light bulb was on. And then I just so, unplug it and it was fine again. So it, it totally, it totally, uh, overrode the signal. Yeah. It was the craziest uh, thing. It was probably it was probably a hundred times more powerful than the IR coming out of your remote control. Yeah, yeah. I bet it just washed out the front end of that uh, 
the IR receiver on your on your TV. Yep. It was the strangest thing. Oh, I got it. Oh, okay. We have one question. Can you amplify the antenna signal and split it to the house cable wiring? Well, that's yeah. that's how you do it now anyway, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. all an antenna signal does is send to a uh, coaxial cable, which is the same thing as yeah. If you are if you're a cable former cable customer and your house is pre-wired for cable, absolutely, we're using the same RG6 coax that your cable company uses. Um, the only thing I got to warn people is every time you split the signal, you lose 50% um, for every split. So that's that's I'm glad you mentioned uh, amplifiers because that's you might need a, a either a preamp or a distribution amplifier, you know, if you if you're splitting it, you know, four or five ways. So, but but again, I've got a customer in New York who put it on an apartment building, and sent it through a professional grade distribution amplifier to a hundred apartment units. Oh, so one antenna could be split almost infinitely, and that's a commercial grade, you know, uh, splitter. But the point is, yes, <laughs> you could split the signal uh, as long as you have a. You know, what, you know, once or twice uh, it might not be an issue, but you start getting up there, you might end up losing signal. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, Matthew tells us, oh, it's an old school satellite box. C-band? Yeah, who cares? That big, yep. that big <laughs> ugly dish? <laughs> that, those things were ridiculous. I, I, I had an aunt, uh, an aunt and uncle who had one of the, you know, the, the monsters. And they had like 800 channels, but they were all terrible. <laughs> Well, they figured out sometime in the 80s that people were watching them and they started scrambling them. Oh, remember, did they? You could, you could watch the network, raw network news feeds on those C-band dishes. And between commercial breaks, you know, Dan Rather and those guys were bantering with their producers and stuff until the, until the next break came over. It was, it was kind of interesting. And then they realized people were watching in on them. <laughs> they started scrambling it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, Reedy, Reed, I'm... Reedy D? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say your name's Reed, buddy. Um, he says, yeah, his existing house cabling, and he's got a six-way distribution amp to multiple TVs. Oh, great. Well, you could probably use the existing, you know, probably don't even need to buy a new one. Yeah. What, what I would ask him, though, to do first, run the antenna just to one TV, just to make sure it's aimed correctly and you're getting reception. Mm -hmm. So then, once he connects it into the whole house distribution system, being, if he starts losing channels, he knows it's not the antenna. At least you can rule that out. It, then he'll know it's downstream of the antenna and it's maybe a bad fitting or a bad amplifier or something like that. So do it in two stages if you could. Sure. Hey, and if it all, if worse comes to worse, you can always just unplug the whole thing, plug in your uh, Wi-Fi thingamajig, whose name I'm forgetting all of a sudden. Clearstream TV. Clearstream TV. Um, and then it's broadcast over Wi-Fi through the whole house anyway. So yeah. you don't really have to worry about it. No, if you have a Wi-Fi network. Wow, oh, good point. <laughs> I, I, I just sort we of make assumptions these days. Yeah, yeah, we do assume because our peers all have that, but yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, Reedy says thanks. No problem, buddy. Um, I'm sure I was very helpful there. It was <laughs> definitely not R R Richard at all. <laughs> okay, well, uh, all right, we are way past time. We're at 7 7.50 right now. Um, and this has been great, but I think we'd probably want to cut it down before we hit to the hour mark. Okay. All right. So um, thanks for thanks for thanks for chatting with us, Richard. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. And tell everyone, tell your friends and neighbors, over the air is free and there's no catch. So. We'll do. Um, and we'll we'll definitely have to do this again once you get the the TV from uh, from uh, South Korea. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm glad to show it off. Awesome. All right, thanks, uh, thanks everybody, and everybody watching. Uh, once again, remember, feel free to like and subscribe. Cord cutters, cord cutters, all with K's instead of C's, you know, all that nonsense. So um, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.